sitting on the shore. I'm unsteady as I shoot this video, balancing my camera on a rock. Emotions are welling up inside me. I had a few friends in my time take their own lives. Some close, some only acquaintances. But each one stops me in my tracks, like an invisible hand halting my forward progress. A few I still can't process to this day. When I learned of Johan's passing, it was no different. But for someone I never met, why did it tug at my heart so hard? I knew I was not the only one with this unexpected, prolonged grief. How did I get here? At this lake? At this moment in time? Preparing myself to witness Johan's ashes carried off by the gentle night air. I learned that Johan was a very complex person inside, an introvert who also had a great passion for adventure. On some level, everyone could easily relate to him and instantly felt connected. When I was asked by Dan and Melanie Losef to organize a memorial ride for Johan a year after his passing, I felt honored to do so and set the wheels in motion. The idea was simple, invite anyone to meet just outside of Cranbrook, enjoy a Friday night feast, and for any cyclists in the group, a wonderful overnight bikepacking trip. In true Johan style, a few hardy souls cycled hundreds of miles to join us, including Tom, who rode from Portland, Oregon. After the dust settled, an eclectic mix of travelers, bikepackers, tree planters arrived. Strangers may have gathered at the start of the feast, but soon friendships were forming through the spinning of adventurous stories of cycling, travel, and Johan. I honestly think he was watching from above as a storm rolled in, cutting power and opening the heavens upon us. We retreated to the old schoolhouse and continued to tell stories. I learned that he would seek solitude while tree planting by camping up to 40 kilometers away from everyone and his quirky sense of humor. But most of all, the way he was always giving to people. We laughed at unimaginable tales of Wind Rider, the fictional bike riding character that appeared in episodes for a film festival spearheaded by Johan. Tears were shed as we shared our profound sorrow for someone that we've never met. Maybe it was his calmness or deep reflecting narration in his films. So when we decided it was time for bed, we all stood up and the power came back on. Coincidence or something else? After a hearty breakfast, we set out for a 65 kilometer ride up to Cherry Lake. The thousand meter elevation gain tested the resolve for some riders. At those times, we thought of how Johan would methodically push his bike through the mud and the snow higher and higher through some distant mountain pass, seemingly without effort, without care, knowing that somehow everything would work out just fine. Our small adventure was full of sun, rain, smiles, and tears, including a few flat tires and a few broken things along the way.
just a sliver back then But I ached in my heart like something meant And when it came out beating a boy in his brain Eventually, everyone pulled into the lake as the clouds gave way to the warm sun. Tents and hammocks looked like colorful mushrooms dotting the forest floor. Kids were laughing. Dogs were looking for treats. Johan would have been happy seeing the gathering, but probably would think it was silly for us to make such a fuss over him. I wandered away from the group to find my moment to reflect on why I'm here at this lake at this moment. We gathered to thank Johan for the lessons he taught us and wished him safe travels in the great beyond as his dust floated away on the cool evening breeze. I still have questions, but from within this newly bonded group of people, I found a better understanding of a true, kind, gentle soul who graced our lives for a short period of time. To everyone, I wish you safe travels on your own adventures in life. Proceeds from this event were donated to Heads Up Guys, who support men in their recovery from depression, reduce their risk of suicide, and inspire them to live healthier lives.